Michigan music lovers, this is Scott Baker, musician, music journalist, and producer, welcoming you to the Michigan Music History Podcast, covering all the territories of the mitten. We cast from around the block of the brand new Michigan Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in Bay City, Michigan, in the heart of the Great Lakes Bay region. And I'm joined by Michigan Music Royalty, sitting to the left and right, Dr. J, Gary Johnson of the Michigan Rock and Roll Hall of Fame and MichiganRockAndRollLegends.com website, and Sir Fred Reif, Michigan music author, publisher, manager, and musician. Together they have taught, lectured, traveled, hosted, and have been quoted worldwide on all things Michigan music. Chances are you stood next to them at the record store or shoulder to shoulder at concerts over the years. They are the record crate diggers and the library micro fishermen that have dug around for the details, the credits, and the lineage that has been part of the backstory of Michigan music. So grab your favorite beverage, hit the cruise, and take a trip back with us as we open up a can of earworms on Michigan's rich music history. Welcome to the Michigan Music History Podcast Show, channeling through all styles and eras of Michigan music from before you were born up through this very minute. And now, your host, Scott Baker. We are back here with episode two of the Larry McRae Podcast here in the MMHP in the 989. We want to thank everybody for sticking it out with us here for our first season. Uh, we're ending it here on episode 20, and we're going to begin season two here in a few weeks. We got a whole slew of Michigan artists, Michigan music history talk, and a lot of details to share with y'all. And uh, on behalf of Dr. J and Sir Fred and myself, we will uh, see you in a couple weeks and enjoy the rest of uh, Larry McRae and his Michigan music history. So Carl went on to form Soul Express then? Well, it became Soul Express after he quit. Oh, it, I it was see. Carl McRae Band. Right. It used to be kind of confusing because everybody said, oh, we seen you last week in Soul Express, the Carl McRae Band. I'm like, no, that's my brother, you know, blah, 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 you know. <laughs> but it was a Carl McRae Band and a Larry McRae Band. And Carl McRae Band became Soul Express okay. because all the... Lewandowski boys and whatever, whatnot, they got with Danny Dodder and formed their own band. Oh, Danny. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, your, and your cousin Tony came on along, along down the line, too, singing? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, right from, yeah. The, right from the beginning. Yeah. yeah. Man, something else. What a family. Anyway, you uh, you hit that. You got That's when uh, Paul Cook came in and the, another another record, which was your big Delta Hurricane album. Right. Soul Shine. The whole 10 yards of that. And that was a huge period for your touring life and for your album releases there. It's just so many things. Looking back, Scotty, on what happened then and what needed to happen. Mm -hmm. And this and that and the other. You know, like like Tommy Emanuel said, life is not a dress rehearsal. Mm -hmm. You know, so it, 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 it pays to pay attention the first time and try to get things right the first time around, you know. And if not, you can... Find yourself paying the price for your mistakes a long ways down the road. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, you had to grab what you could. Then I mean, you're, you like you said, Molly McGuire's to the national stage in Europe on tour. Within months, you were point blanks offering you another deal for the Delta Hurricane right. to do that record. Right, Soul Shine comes on another tour. No, you had you had to grab everything as fast as you could to maintain where you'd set your your bar. Exactly, and then they they come here. They had a couple of releases. They had a label here called Charisma. Uh -huh. They come out on Point Blank Charisma right. here in the United States. And they were doing the promotion. They were doing everything the right way. It's just, you know, some managerial decisions that were made that might have should have went a different way that caused things to drift in a different direction. But I was fortunate enough that, like I said, the... Uh, personal relationships that I established with the promoters and with the other musicians that I work with have always allowed me a chance to still stay out here and to be active in the community. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just time for all the ducks to line up <laughs> this time. And I think that I got a good handle on it. I'm just trying to take my time and make that right decision. Yeah. Where you're at right now is a pretty, it's a pretty good um, second win for you here. Well, right now it is. And I'm, mm -hmm. Intending and hoping to make the best of it, Scott. Right, right. Yeah. Now, uh, 
I remember a story, and I, I just got to mix this in for the era purposes. Uh-huh. Albert King was right during that period where you got to work with him. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, and you, I, the, I the, the chicken bucket and <laughs> the whole thing. Tell, tell me about that. <laughs> I would see Albert all the time, and he used to like to rag me and call me Fat Boy. Mm-hmm. Hey, Fat Boy, where you going? I ain't doing nothing. But I was sitting there one day changing my strings, getting ready to play, and by that time I had did the European thing when I come home. After seeing Gary Moore with humbugs, I had to have some with a humbug. Mm-hmm. So I didn't know I liked Les Paul by the time. And I didn't want a 335 because everybody who played the blues had a 335. So Mitty Jigo had a nice tobacco brown V guitar sitting up there. And I looked at it and I'm like, okay, I like Albert King. This is a humbug. It's not a 335. And I played it, man. When I played it, you know, the accessibility to the neck is what sold it to me. Mm-hmm. Long story short, I bought that. So I'm, I'm standing, and plus, you know, I was a big Albert fan, you know, he's yeah. my hero. He's your know? hero, yeah. And so uh, I'm sitting there changing strands. He, oh, let me see you get to, I said, Albert, ain't nothing to this. I said, this just a regular one. I said, ain't nothing special about it. Oh, let me see you little guitar. Hell, I got a garage full of them things. I don't want your little guitar. <laughs> 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 but he, he was like that, if he liked you, he would talk to you, and yeah. you could hang out and have a good time with him. But I have seen him really be mean yeah, he, he to, some, to some people, too. And he was a big song gun, too. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> he didn't look like you want to get him upset. And he was probably yeah. two or three inches taller than you yeah. and wider than me. And, you know, size 16 shoe and them mm. big old yeah. grandpa fingers that's big around as your thumb. That's oh, his point, you know, them big old King Kong hands. He yeah. had some... Huge mix, you can you know. feel him when you hear that uh, live watermelon album, San Francisco seventy two or sixty seven. When you see him play, when yeah. you see his hand like that, yeah. it's like I did a big old. He stops on the pump. floor and his springs and his reverb are right, 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 right in, the, in the album as he's recording, and you're like, you can hear that big dude yeah. stomping, man. Yeah, but he was he was a hell of a guy, man. If if he liked you, he criticized you. He stay on you. Now you know I want you doing so and so. You know, don't yeah. you do that? I, I come in there. We were getting ready to start. Uh, we were doing the Delta Hurricane record, and he was living in West Memphis, but he'd always be down on Bill Street every night. Uh-huh. So he come in. He knew we was in the studio. He come in, and uh, I come in. I had chicken for everybody. The first thing out of my, your man on time. How come you can't be on time? <laughs> and I mean, I mean, you know, the session is supposed to start at four thirty. What it might have been four thirty two or three. Yeah. You know, everybody was there, but your man on time. How come you ain't on time? Give me that chicken. And then he said, give me a piece of that chicken. Yeah. And so I kept on waiting. He said, give me a piece of that chicken. You think I'm playing, don't you? And so he said that he fixed his plate. He got chicken. He gave us a song that um, it's on the same pattern. Like he got a song called You Upset Me. Uh, uh, 24 in the ways, 36 in the mm. years. Uh, so if you, my little, you upset me, baby. Well, he gave us a song called Bill Street Funk. And he hummed it out to us how he wanted to go and everything. And we re- we recorded it. Oh. But it didn't, we didn't put it on the record. I called Gary Bells back a year or two later. Hey, where's that real that they claim is lost? They can't find it. That's that one that you and Paul have asked me, talked about. And I, yeah. I forgot the name of the song, but that was it. Bill, Bill Street Funk. That's it, man. That's what Albert gave to us at. Them songs got made like they can't find it. Huh. Oh, we can't. We don't know where it is. Oh, One day, maybe when we dead and gone, somebody will find mm-hmm. it. Yeah. Oh man. So you went on in the in the nineties, there, man. You were you did the blues uh, House of Blues label, all the albums Gary mentioned earlier, uh, and the cover songs and stuff, and your Alma Brothers little bits where you got to go out with them started taking off here little by little. You started getting bigger opening act shows, right, right. in America, right. Um, and, that, and, that, and that helped it definitely helped to be in association with the almonds you know because a lot of good opportunities spring spring from that yeah. you know just being in association with them and I always felt really special man because it's so many other blues players that I know like from Chicago and other places they used to always say man how you how you do that you know how you get on well I didn't know what to tell them you know, I, I just, lucky, I guess, or whatever, you know, mm-hmm. I got I got included, I got invited, and 
it was it was a good thing. A lot of people know that it happened. You was know? Warren the con the conductor to put that together? Because you had Soul Shine ahead of time. How did that work out? Well, Warren kind of used to run the set anyway, and so Warren would Warren would do everything for Greg so that he didn't have to do nothing. Mm -hmm. All Greg did was go to the stage and he would sing and play. Warren would set up the set list and everything like that. So anytime if I was in the audience or whatever, if I asked or didn't ask, they always made it available to come up, you know, if they knew I was there, they would mm -hmm. put a song in the list so I could come and set in. Yeah. That was, a, that was the thing, man. And you, did, was it, how did that Soul Shine come to you initially, I guess? Was it a demo that Paul got a hold of that gave to you? Yeah, because uh, when I did, uh, when I did Delta Hurricane, we got uh, Last Four Nickels, yeah. we got Adding Up, and we got Last Hand of the Night from a writer by the name of Dave Steen. Mm -hmm. And he was out of, uh, Omaha, Nebraska. He used to somebody and the Hawks or the Night Hawks or whatever. He had a regionally popular band himself, but he come off the road and started writing songs. So I did three of his his songs. We're in the process of getting Dave Steen's catalog. He had uh, found Warren Haynes' catalog from this of uh, catalog from this uh, manager at the time named Doc Fields. Mm -hmm. Doc Fields is no longer with us either, but that's who used to have the Warren. Mm -hmm. back in the day so when i met warren warren gave me four 90 minute tapes that 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 had songs after songs so uh the song who to believe maydale if hard aches with nickels stuff that they almost uh, end up Before doing the later Woodies fly, yeah all of them songs, solo, yeah all them songs was on them i had them demos back in what it would have been like 89 or something like that 89 yeah. 90. when you're doing ambition yeah yeah unbelievable yeah Okay, that and so that's that's how I got them songs. When he got Dave Steen's catalog, I, he had got Warren's catalog, and it's another writer too. I can't, J J J Jerry Lynn Williams. Mm -hmm. I think that did, did he write stuff for uh, Clapton and for uh, Johnny Werner? I believe so. Yeah, I, had, I remember Paul talking about had, him. had his had had some tapes from him too, yeah. some I, demos from him. I, Paul told me that story before. But I, I never pieced together the timing of it, and that's why I wanted mm -hmm. to ask you that. Mm -hmm. yeah. That sure took off, and then the almonds end up grabbing a hold, taking it back in, and Warren cut it solo, and, and finally now it's known as an almond song. But you were the first to record it and put that. They, up. they used to they used to give me a hard time about it. Now I had played this song for five years before the almond brothers decided to cut it, right. and then. Uh, before it wasn't no big deal. After the almonds <laughs> cut it, it was like, "Hey, you doing an almond brother song?" <laughs> You're I like, said, nah. uh, kind of sorta, you know. But we've uh -huh. been doing this song for five years yeah. already, you know. So I you always have to explain that, you know. Yeah. Yeah, well, yeah, we doing it, but we had been doing it. We didn't start doing it because they put it out. We had been doing it. Yeah, this is ninety two. Check my it, records yeah, back then. Right, yeah. right. Yeah. Oh man. So by the end of that, by the end of the '90s, you were rolling in a lot of different directions. I know Paul put out uh, was getting ready to do Magnolia Entertainment, and and by the time the '90s had rolled around, Scotty, man, I I had been on the road. Mm -hmm. The end of the '90s, I had been on the road long enough to I, I was tired. I ran hard for a number of years, you know, and yeah. I, I I had a kid and mm -hmm. thought that that was the thing for me to do, and I should have been. <laughs> Hauling ass the other way, you know. I'm, I'm glad to have my son, but what I'm saying, I should have never, I should have kept the pedal to the metal. When you get momentum, and when you got it working in your favor, you hold it as long as you can. Mm -hmm. You never let your momentum go down. You do whatever it is that you got to do to to stay there, because mm -hmm. once once it diminishes, it's hard to get, get it all way. moving again. You know. Yeah, was was the live album live on I seventy five? Was that more of an attempt to get back, you know, bring it back uh, as a live no, act? it was just something that I had always wanted to do. I had always wanted to do that. And that's another eyesore for me, not because of the project, but because of the fact that for years and years, I tried to get uh, an album released that come out of that, not, not my record, Lucky Peterson and I played together two nights that same night that we made that record. And this set was unbelievable. It was my band back in Lucky. Yeah. And uh, man, I mean, the, the music was just incredible. It, 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 all it needed was just a little dressing up in the mix and to be mastered. And I, I've been trying to get a hold of that gentleman. I talked to him a couple of times, the guy that got the masters and everything, but 
he won't correspond. I think I think he know what he got and this and that and the other. And I think he got other plans or something for it. But I tried to get that done before Lucky passed. You know, man, we need to put this record out. And I reached out to him over half a dozen times, but I, I ain't been able to get there. And you're talking about Lucky's album with him singing. You back? You guys backing him? Well, we both sang. Right, but yours came out right. Yeah, but as a solo. Yeah. Album, but not my, not the, not the session that we did with Lucky. Oh, see, okay. both nights my band played a set, uh -huh. and then the next set was us with Lucky. Uh huh. And so you want that complete? Yes, I want that. I want the music we played with Lucky. Was there a video shot that night? <sighs> it wasn't too long ago. Well, that's been that's been almost yeah. twenty years. Yeah, ago. It is, but I guess it has. I'm just. Yeah. I wasn't familiar with the venue that you recorded that at. It was uh, called Tenney Roadhouse. It didn't stay in business very long. It only stayed in business about three or four years. It used to be a bus station. Okay. You know, you know where um, in Dearborn, on Michigan, I believe, and. Michigan, and what's that? What's that street coming this way? Um, shoot, Telegraph or uh, it's the service Ford? drive. It's the service drive of uh, ninety four. It's the it's the east west highway. You know, coming coming from Dearborn over there. Anyway, uh, Southfield. Yeah, yeah. It might be it might be Southfield, Southfield right highway. by the Ford Ford dealership right. and all that is. Yep. You know where the old um, Harry Cisco's, where the new Cisco's was, right in Dearborn. Well, right by there. Okay. It, it, it was across the street in the mall on the other side of the road, across the road. I forgot about from Cisco's. from where Harry's was. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh huh. So that you know that's where it was at. It used to be a bus bus station. That was a popular um, Mediterranean restaurant that used to be in that same strip mall right there too, across the street there. And so that that that's where it was located. Well, you really got a nice sound on that album. Yeah, and and it was it was recorded a that. It was uh did you know we set up we got set up right there live and recorded. I wish I could get that other session so bad. I don't mm. know what to do, and that would be a good thing to do now because Lucky is gone, and the proceeds his part of the proceeds could go to his family, oh, his yeah. wife and family. Oh, you know? great idea, Larry. Yeah, yeah. I'll have to help you. I'll see if we can dig some more stuff out on that one. Yeah, I'd love to. Find Bill Godwin. He's the mm -hmm. guy with the mask. Well, if you guys are out there in podcast land, we are looking for early Larry McCray photos for our Michigan Music History site, as well as anything you hear Larry bringing up tonight that you can help put us in contact with some people. You know, people. Scott, we've got Larry with his guitar here. Uh, hey, Larry, <laughs> you know, do me a favor. Before we finish up uh, some final thoughts, and I, I got a few other goodies mm -hmm. to throw in here. Give him a taste of those two songs that, that Gary was talking about earlier, because he played them for me uh, about a month ago, and we shed some tears over one of them. Some magical tunes. You talking about uh, No More Crying? Yeah, man. All right, this is dedicated to all the people who lost in the pandemic. One second here. No more crying and no more pain. I seen you walk into the room You had tears in your eyes Eyes filled with sadness, filled with gloom I don't wanna see you cry You keep telling me you love me It's too soon for me to go But I've waited much too long Cause I'm going where it's no more crying and no more pain. I'm gonna never leave your side. Cause if my heart is where you stand, you see me smiling every sunset. Hear me laughing every time it rains. I'm talking about no more crying. No more crying, no, no more pain Green up passes where I'm going I'm just one step away Though the memories live on 
Cause in my heart is where you stand Well, it's hard to find the good When you lose someone you love But I'll be waiting, waiting for you there In a bit of place Cause I'm going where it's no more crying no more pain I'm gonna never leave your side Cause in my heart's where you stand Well, it's hard to find a good When you lose someone you love But I've been waiting, waiting for you there In a better place No more crying And no more pain It's all about No more crying And no more pain It's all about No more crying And no more pain Yeah that uh, Thank you, was one soulful song there. Yeah. Yes, indeed. Oh, well, Larry I, McRae. Oh, thank you, Larry. Though I remember we just, it was about three weeks before Paul passed, man. Uh, yeah. we, were, we were doing a talk for a story, and we had five minutes to take some pictures. Oh, actually, we already, already did the talk, and you're like, you got to hear these two songs of mine, man. Right. And well, you, you said you wrote that for your brother? Passed? Yeah, my, my brother and my sister-in-law, they passed one week apart. One passed on From the COVID? 19th. No, no, this this was back in 19. My, my sister-in-law, she was 75 years old and pretty healthy, and she fell and broke her, broke her hip, broke her uh, big bone in her hip, and she laid there for about 16 hours before anybody found her. Ooh. Well, they end up having to put a, a, a plate from just below her knee on up to her thigh. She had 14, 14 studs in there, and she just kind of lost her will to live. She tried to recover. She couldn't get better, couldn't get better. They put her in a nursing home and soon she stopped eating and expired, you know. My brother, I had left the week before going to Newport, Arkansas, going to Newport on one week and King Biscuit mm. on the following week. And I got down there, I, I, I left him. He had dementia and and he lived by himself for a long time. Which but brother? Uh, James. Oh, that's yeah. the one, I right? Yeah, James. And so, um, once he got that, you know, he, he needed assistance. He couldn't be left alone to take care of himself. I got in place on Wednesday. And I left town on Thursday, got there Friday morning, got woke up to the phone call and my brother had died. And I'm like, I just... <laughs> Another one thing that was... Hard yeah. to believe, you know, hard to accept, you know. Yeah. That was in 2019. Yeah. 19, yeah, yeah, the fall, fall, October of 19. I just remember a few, it was about a month and a half ago we were doing a photo shoot and we had five, ten minutes. You played those and you and I were both balling at the end of it. And, uh, yeah, if you got something on your mind, if you yeah. got death on your mind or lost a loved one, it, it really it, makes you think. That song hits it. That song's a home run. Yeah, both are. Both new ones are. You want to give us the other one? What does it matter? Yeah. It's a beautiful uplifter. Someday the mail just don't come, and someday the moon stays up. Despite the sun, for cats call for sunny, but my shoes are red and soaking wet. Yeah, without expectation. 
temptation Yes, this is what you might get Well, it makes no difference When your baby's gone No matter what the reason you're still all alone So you sit back crying Wondering what can you do to make it right Wanna hear the high priest Man you know it's gonna split up I love it don't matter Tell me what does it matter It don't matter what other folks think About how much you smoke and you drink There ain't nothing that you can do When your heart's been broken too Was it lies and merely fiction But you still got to push on through Just another day A nickels and quarter Well that waitress brought you on your plate Sure ain't what you order But the whole lot of ketchup Well it seems just like it Hear the place them off the table Hear the flow in the shadow Well I love it don't matter Tell me what does it matter I've been planning for love I'm like a broke 49er I thought I'd hit the muggle on But now I just can't find her Oh, my baby's gone And she ain't never, never coming back no more With gold dust in the wind Gonna scatter. Well, I love it, don't matter. Tell me what does it matter? Well, I love it, don't matter. Tell me what does it matter? Yeah, yeah. going deep in the blues on that one. Without love, it don't matter. Yeah, a good message. I taped a little bit at the end. That's all right. A little, little bit for you there. Cool, cool. Oh, Larry, thank you so much for bringing the tunes tonight. I, I know those two are special to you. You said you wrote 60 songs over the pandemic, 30 songs? What was that? Probably, probably about 20. Oh, 20. But about, there was 20 good ones, you said. Well, yeah. that's what I'm thinking. Yeah. I'm, I'm hoping. And you were hoping at least four or five you were trying to mix into this year's set list somehow. Right, right, right. right. Including those two. Down to the bottom, you know, we were talking about, uh, you know, how life, um, life got its changing, you know, life ain't worth living, you know, if all you're doing chasing dreams. I, I was like, uh, sometimes in life, can't get what you want, gotta learn how to take it, make it on what you need. Looking through the laws of time They say that good things Always rises to the surface If you want to make it to the top Gotta start from down 
way down, down to the bottom, to the bottom of the river where the truth will go. Talking about down Talking about down, down to the bottom, to the bottom of a river where the still waters go. Way down, all the way down, the bottom of a river in the valley where the still waters go. To the bottom of the river in the valley where true love grows. Well, I'm talking about down, way down, way down, all the way down, deep down in the foundation, solid as a rock. You got to start at the bottom if you wanna make it to the top. Well, the heart needs the mind, the mind needs the body. Well, the body needs the soul. Come on, baby, let's go way down, way down. You know, some oh, of man. built on concept like that. You know, mm-hmm. yeah. Bottom of the bottom of the. Yeah. Love built from the foundation of, you know. You saying that the night we hung out after Paul passed. Oh, and, and oh, yeah, I man. just bought. Where are you coming up with these, Larry? There's some brilliant oh, I songs, blues, man. I got a blues for Paul now. I can't. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, it's. Uh, let me see. Uh, well, I feel the rain. This one thing I know. There are crooks and lines and places where no one should ever go. I was born to play the blues, and I played enough for two. I played them for my own. Now I'm playing the blues for you. Oh wow! Uh, I see the blue lights flashing, and you made your final call. Uh, and love it all. I play the blues without you. Play the blues. About you, play the blues in the middle of the night. I know you hear me cry. I play the blues about you. You know, the, oh, it's there. a it's a call. Oh but, yeah. yeah. But my voice is fucked up. I ain't saying what the fuck. <laughs> you know, Larry, those those songs just sound like we'd be perfect for solo performing. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to. Yeah, really? I mean, you I know, mean I they're perfect these. for it. <laughs> my voice, I I slept with my window open. Last night, the whole time this morning, I've been talking a little raspy, but I mean, you you get the oh yeah, oh, man. you're sounding wow, great, man. Yeah. I really are. Yeah. yeah. Can so, we sneak in one question about the Gibson sessions? Sure. And you recorded, you know, of course, we're Michigan music history, and you know, Bob Seger, let's face it, is king. Right, right, right. Uh, and right. you did Night Moves. That's um, just one of them songs that I have wanted to do 
all of my life. I mean, you know, I, I like uh, that song, you know, I like Seagull, you know, and uh, I just thought that I would do the, them songs, what I picked was some of my favorite pick of uh, classic rock, like the, the Stealing, uh, yeah. Seagull song, right. um, Born on the Bayou, you, you, you know, all all of them is them is them is my songs. If it, when I call myself shaking my head, you know, shaking my hair. Those were your jams back <laughs> them, in the them, day. Them the ones, you yeah. Know? yeah, yeah, yeah. So that that's that's all that was. I I wanted to um, doing that. I didn't have the pressure of trying to write songs or trying to come up with material and stuff. We say, okay, this is what it is. Let's do this and see if they'll accept us. And, you know, that's it, all it is to me. Get fishing, trying to see. And you, you had some pretty good guest players on that uh, oh, yeah, album, yeah, too. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, uh, what's that one? Uh, 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 Can't You See had, had Dickie Betts on there. Yeah. And uh, Needle and Spoon had uh, Derek, Derek Trucks on there. So, I mean, you know, I was I was happy to have them. And I thought it was a good project. But if you don't have nobody promoting your music, what you got anyway? Right. You know, it's all about, they can sell turret wrapped up in a, in a bow tie, you know, if if, if the right, you, you, you know they will. Yeah. If, if, but if, if the right people got to be selling it. Yeah. If yeah. the right person all said, that's a great turret. Well, then the turret is in. <laughs> Am I right or wrong? You're right on the money. Yeah. It don't matter what you sell it. Yeah, that was a natural one. You. I mean, you it's know, you had, selling it. you had great songs. You had great guest players on there. You yeah. know? Old Jimmy Harry. That should have happened. Oh, so did. I forgot about you, see. Yeah. Like I said, man, I, I when I do a record or something, I try to, you know, it ain't, it ain't, uh, I haven't had any impact. I haven't had the impact that I would like to see happen, which everybody wants that to happen for them. But I still think that it's a lot of that music that if it was promoted, I ain't saying everything we did was good, but if you could go back and pick just the best, the best of the best, and promote that music, I still think it's something there worthwhile promoted the yeah. masses of the people never got it yep. Yep. the masses never got it so yep. for a lot of people it's still new music it's fresh music yeah yep. sure I yeah. Hear. that's great the way you look at that so i don't you know i'm just trying to i got a guy that's going to help me with uh, my social media platform you know paul didn't do nothing with social media and that's how people become stars that lark and pole was discovered on social media youtube and social media yeah mm -hmm. yeah and so this guy, he said he's going to help me build my brand. He helped a friend of mine that I know made $180,000 on YouTube last year. Yeah, wow. On YouTube. Wow. Fantastic, Larry. So, I mean, I don't know how to do it. I don't mm -hmm. know how to get yeah. the money, but some people do. Mm -hmm. Well, so, sounds like you're making the right move there. You know, I'm, I'm trying. I'm you got to go where you got to go, and that's where you got to go now. Well, mm -hmm. I'm not thinking low anymore because, hell. <laughs> I'm too old to be starting out building up. I mean, you know, shit. Yeah. It ain't no building up. It's, I mean, I've been out here for a whole career. Yeah, and you got so, a terrific library. So it's 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 going to take somebody who see the value in me. Right. It, I I ain't going to be able to go up where uh, these all these young kids is. You know, I'm not I'm not even trying to compete with them. You know, I'm not trying to go for their market. You know, young kids don't want to see me play. But if I can get it to the right people, I think that it's still a audience out there to support this music Absolutely. you know 35 on up mature yeah. mature yeah. audience that would be a young person for me a 35 40 year old person yeah. that would be young in my but audience, if it's you know? presented the right way i think young people could get into the blues i believe that as well uh, you I know but they that. have to you know they have yeah. to be introduced some totally way. totally yeah. Right. Yeah. right i mean that's a great music form it's a kind of the basis of everything so uh yeah i think as there's you potential know, there Larry, and in Europe, it's way bigger. I'm just trying to see what's out there. And Boy, Joe Bonamassi is all over the internet. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, he's, man. He's got the campaign that spends I, the money in all the right places. Cause he's I, I, he's I, like a smear. I think it's the daily email from Joe yeah. Bonamassi. Yeah. Right. <laughs> he's, he's on there every day. Yeah. He's yes. on there every day. He's relentless. Yeah. 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 But that's how you that's how you get your word out there, mm -hmm. I guess. His people are definitely back and that's a that's something to think about too, yeah, while we were Oh yeah. I, 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 and you know what else he done? He's been uh he's got a fund that he's funding himself that you go in and apply and he's giving musicians up to fifteen hundred dollars to help him out during the pandemic. Really? So that that resonated big time. I'm like if Joe doing that he is a real motherfucker. Mm -hmm. You know? That's good. Yeah. That's good. I didn't know that. 
Yeah. Nah, that mm. that that that's what you call putting your money where your mouth is. Absolutely. You know. Wow. Yeah, he just uh, did that uh, album with Dion. Yeah. You know, and, and kind of brought Dion. <laughs> you run, back. run. What did Dion do? What did Dion have? Uh, run around Sue. Run around Sue. Well, okay. it's a little bit before your time. Well, he had many hits. Big who for did, us. Did, uh, do run, run. Well, that was the Crystals. That was, uh, oh. you know, a Phil Spector deal. Okay, I remember Dion. I just can't. Places to- he, you know, he is still great. Yeah, I, I saw him at Soaring Eagle probably about, uh, oh, I don't know, maybe nine, ten years ago. Uh-huh. He was just awesome. That's when he just had the album out on, uh, you know, Rock and Roll Heroes. He was covering, oh. you know, the, a lot of the people that were around when he was, the, you know, a big star back in the 50s and uh, 60s. And uh, But so many stories. I mean, he was just great to see him at Soaring <laughs> Well, you know, Eagle. he's the one that, when Buddy Holly and the Big Bopper and Richie Valens got killed. He stayed back. Yeah, he stayed back. He was the other star of the show. And yeah. he stayed back. Well, did you know the story about the yeah. $35, Fred? What about <laughs> 35 <laughs> bucks? <laughs> well, you know, the cost of the ticket was $35. And he remembered that's what it cost his parents Oh, uh, you know, right. in rent uh, for their house, and so he didn't want to spend the thirty-five dollars. Plus, he was a northern guy, and he used to the snow. yeah, yeah. It wasn't quite like uh, you know, Holly, Buddy and Richie, and uh, I didn't know that story. That's great. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> what was he from? Is he? He's not Michigan based. Oh, yeah, yeah that New was York. from the Bronx. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, and the Belmonts. Uh, that was from Belmont Avenue, which is down, uh, you know, in his neighborhood where he grew up. Well, his new album, it's he's got somebody different on every cut. Yeah, yeah, and even Springsteen is on. Right. Springsteen, his, his wife. wife, is on one of them. I think, Larry, you're thinking of Del Shannon. He was from Michigan. That was around the same time. Run around yeah, run, run away. Runaway. Del run Shannon. away. Yeah, that was Del Shannon. And, uh, yeah, of course, a great uh, influence, too, in Michigan. Yeah. Well, well, I got one more little bit of funny side story. Or not funny. It was cool. Man, it was cool. Let's talk about... Warren getting you on the bill with a Phil Lesh for a brief period of time. Because <laughs> no, cause nobody does believe this story to this day because those tapes aren't in much circulation for the audience recordings. But. Wait, wait, wait. Well, here's here's what happened. Uh, and this guy is gone too, man. I'm telling you, everybody I talk about is gone. Mm. But anyway, uh, it used to be a group in Lansing called Bob Harvey. You remember them guys? Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, well, Billy Johnson played guitar for Bob Harvey and he was a good friend of Paul's. They had a uh, great, uh, Phil Lesh put a thing in a magazine, a campaign for you to send in a piece of music. And the winner of this piece of music was going to get a chance to play Jerry Garcia's guitar, Wolf, mm-hmm. <laughs> on stage. But what they don't tell you that is in uh, sound check. You don't get to play on the gig, it's in sound check and stuff like that. So this guy submitted some of my music. And it won. And then they come back, okay, well, you your winner, you the winner, and stuff like that. You know, you come, and I'm like, I told Paul, I ain't going to California yeah. playing no fucking sound check. And it's going, you got to buy your own ticket, and all oh. everything, you got to get there, oh. and everything on, on your own. To, I'm like, no. I remember and I'm like, I'm like well, who, you know, who did that in the first place? And so that conversation left from that, then Paul, being who he was, he started, well, well, why don't you put him in the band? You oh, know? my gosh. I'll never forget this. I got a call from Paul. Larry don't know shit about the Grateful Dead. You got to give him some of them tapes of yours. You got some of that music over there. And I'm like, what are you talking about? He's like, he's going to go play with Phil. He's got to get some sessions in. He's got, and then all of a sudden, I got a call from California. Paul called, had them call me with your set list or what you had to learn. I, so I, I got Larry all the material I could because I was just getting into the dead world at that time, hardcore. Because Warren had started doing tra- everything. What he started doing? working with Phil and the Dead. So and I, I was always doing stuff with Warren and Mule and all my brothers back then. So well, was, let me tell you how that worked out. Now I went I went to Phil Lesh's house for rehearsal. So when I got there, uh, he lived up by Stanford. I forget where we was exactly, at, but he lived right. He te- and I found out that. He teaches at Stanford. Uh, uh, he, yeah. he was a teacher at uh, Stanford University. He's a really smart dude. Yeah. But anyhow, I got to his house, and so Molo and all the other guys, they were there. I'm like, okay, I'm ready to do some cram rehearsals to try to get this 
stuff down when nobody rehearsed with me. <laughs> Not one of them. They had one little rehearsal and we played for probably about 30 minutes. They played for about 30 minutes. Other than that, do it in the hotel. Learn, learn it on. Well, hell, man, can you imagine trying to cram 40 songs or something like that in a, in a two or three days mm -hmm. a week's time, what I had and all this stuff? And then they want me to be the singer? Yeah. It was Larry Campbell, the other guy at the time? On Larry, Larry, Larry Campbell was on guitar. Feel on bass. Uh, I forget that girl name. Mm -hmm. And what was that keyboard? Uh, he was, oh, he was from Particle. And, and Molo, so. Molo yeah. was, the, was the drummer. Yep, John Molo. Yep, yep. Bruce Horns being, yep. And so, you know, like I said, we got there when nobody rehearsed or do nothing. So, hell, I had to do the best I could. They threw me to the fucking wolves. That was now, is this Phil Lesh and Friends? Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. yeah. They, right. they booked two shows uh, near the, somewhere in the lower in, east in, side in, of New in, York. In, in uh, uh, what they call in, it? In the village. In the village, yeah. yeah. It's on, as they call it, Houston Street. Yeah. It's, uh, it's the, it was, um, uh, I don't think that venue's even there anymore. There was what, what was it? Yeah. K, K, Samba, Samba, Cuba, or something. It, 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 it was a Latin club. It yeah. was a Latin club. It had a, and it was right on Ninth and yeah. Houston. Yeah. And uh, man, went in there, all them yeah. uh, Break for Dead folks in there. I didn't know not one goddamn song. Yeah. Not one song all the way through. And I had to get through, and then and then to boot, Molo was sick on the first night, got, so and you had, had to, an impromptu drama. A dude that didn't even know none of the music. Uh, one of the ba uh, Batiste. It was Batiste. Yeah. It was yeah. one of the. It was uh, John Batiste, younger brother. Yep. They brought him in there, and he didn't know a guy. He knew less than he I. He was knew. doing jazz versions, which was fine with Phil because Phil was in, he's in jazz mode. But, but see, you're what, going, what? What, what? Whenever I was sent to Phil, and I said, "Man, please come on," I said, "Can we rehearse a little? Oh, just just uh, just play what you feel." <laughs> Total jam yeah. style. Yeah. And and the second night, Molo showed up, and Warren came in and sat in and helped revive the evening. I forgot <laughs> Warren even. I forgot, remember you remember him a lot of stuff, man. I well, I remember Paul. Paul's like that was the night I wanted to forget. <laughs> yeah, I know. I yeah, know. that must have been like you know when you have a nightmare and you know, you, have, you, know these, even, you have these dreams where everything's going wrong. <laughs> even, <laughs> at that, you're living even, it. even 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 at that, I thought I had a couple of good moments you within did. two hours set. You know that I, I did good a couple, mm. three or four of them songs. I did okay, but I mean, I I like to, especially if you're gonna be in front of somebody, this for real deal, to try to be as sharp as you can. Sure. And mm -hmm. yeah, was, I'll never was, forget, it, man. We 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 all flew in to New York, and uh, you were like, "Thank God, somebody's here that knows me, what's going on." <laughs> and I stood, I just stood in front of Larry all you know all night, like, "Focus, brother, focus, do your thing, man." And he was just like that, like, oh, this is crazy. Oh, Second night went way better than the first night. Cause the packed house, but, too. You know they yeah, had, they had yeah. a packed house. There were so many people in there. You had to part your way to, and that motherfucker looking at me, who is that? Who is that? <laughs> and after that, Phil, <laughs> Phil's only had jazz players and jam band guys after that. He never went back and grabbed another blues cat. So yeah. it's been different. Yeah, I broke him up. He did. <laughs> he started a whole new trend there. Broke him up from that oh. shit. I won't do that no more. Uh, what an experience, man! I felt bad for Brother Larry there. It was, and it is what it is. There, like that second night was good. Second night was all right. You know crazy. what? Though, them them kind of failures, them kind of like I said, you know, when you fall, you get back up and you keep on moving, man. So you know, hey, mm -hmm. that's just part of part of my history that I, I I will never forget. But you know, the stuff like that leave a bad taste in your mouth. I do. You know what I mean? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And you, from here on out, Larry, you're looking at your second win. You're looking at doing stuff on your own terms. Uh, you don't have a manager right now, so things are going to fall as they fall. You're going to try to feel your way through it. Is that the kind of direction I think we were you were uh, discussing? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's definitely my plan. All right. Well, Larry, thank you for almost two full hours here. And uh, we're in a little bit of a sweat bulk. Michigan, that's, <laughs> yeah. Michigan is in a total uh, sweat storm today. Ooh, yeah. Ooh, and we're in a tight little space in here. So, uh we want to thank you, bro. Maybe we can come back and get an update on where it's heading this fall or maybe early next year or something or whenever you feel like you, because you can get the word out this way too. Right. And we'll just throw her up there. And, I, uh, I, I would love to come back, man, now that I know where the studio is at and yeah. everything. Some of these fans, I'm going to be bugging you. Well, I hope so. <laughs> yeah. And you got your own radio show in Grayling too, right? I do. I do Q100, uh, Grayling 100.3. I do the Fox in Michigan, or, or Michigan, in Flint, Michigan, mm -hmm. and I do WMPA in Grand Haven in Fredericksburg. 93.1, wow. 93 
103.9, 100.3. Is that the same show broadcast on all the shows? No. Those are all different shows. I, I do each one of them for... Separate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they're all come out on different days. Like, is Grayling Monday? Grayling is Tuesday. Tuesday. Uh, 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 Grand Haven is Saturday. Uh -huh. And Flint is Sunday. Un unreal. 8, 8 o'clock Tuesday, 8 p.m. Tuesday, 8 a.m. Saturday, and 6 p.m. Uh, uh, I'm sorry. 8 p.m. Tuesday, 6 p.m. Saturday, and 8 a.m. Sunday morning. Right now, that Sunday morning blues show. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm, I've heard it, and I've heard all three of it. It's, it's, yeah. it's in Flint on the Fox. Mm -hmm. Sunday morning at 8, Saturday evening at 6, Tuesday evening at 8. And you can stream all those on the web around the world and catch up with, with Larry wow. Weekly, not just uh, in a podcast situation or, or a newspaper interview, but uh, he is going to be back out doing this thing here and uh we're getting the blues to the people and we want to thank you for your michigan love i want to thank you for all the things you've done for the area musicians from the bottom of all of our hearts and uh thank you for coming on the mmhp with us here larry it's, it's, yeah it's, thanks larry it's, it's, it's great it's an honor and a pleasure to be here with old friends and as far as the people of michigan i want to take my hats off and congratulate and thank the people of uh michigan for having open minds and for being able to discern and accept things maybe that's out of the norm for them and, and in terms of what we are accustomed to. Everybody got a different beat, a different swing, but when you are allowed to present yourself, sometimes there's more understanding. So the people of Michigan have been great people to play for and have shown a lot of love and I can't do nothing but take my head off and love them back and thank them for the opportunities that they've given me. Hi, Inspiration always, my friend. All right, big love, brother. And we will talk to y'all soon on the next MMHP in the 989. Thank you for tuning in. Additionally, Dr. J can be reached at michiganrockandrolllegends.com. Sir Fred can be hit up at fredrife.com. And Scott through scottbakermusic.com. You can also search Michigan Music History Podcast on Facebook and YouTube. You've been listening to the MMHP in the 989. From all of us at the podcast, we want to thank you for tuning in. I think the couch didn't eat my phone. People say, well, call yourself. Did you say, grab that? Well, how can I call?